Hey guys, welcome back. Here is the video you have all been waiting for. Truck tour. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the chassis. It's a 2021 Kenworth T370. Makes 330 horsepower. Has a inline six cylinder engine. And gets about eight miles to the gallon. So the truck is has a GVWR of 33,000 pounds, which means you need a commercial driver's license to legally operate it. 56 gallon fuel tank capacity. Um, truck does take diesel exhaust fluid, lovely emissions. So the interior of the camera is pretty basic, has all the basic things that you would need. Passenger seat is non-adjustable. Batteries are located underneath the passenger seat. Driver's seat is a little bit adjustable, mostly up and down. Doesn't really go too far, it's kind of irritating. And then it runs into the trim. All of your basic gauges, con climate control, radio. We have some aftermarket switches that we put in. Um, this is for backup camera. I can leave it on all the time or I can turn it off to have it activate in reverse only we have power inverter i don't want the power inverter on all the time in the boxes so i can turn it on or off we have outside work lights and we have strobe lights dash cam because you never know what's going to happen we have a co-pilot Service body is an all aluminum Stellar T Max. We have American Eagle 46P. I believe that is 45 CFM at 100 PSI. It's hydraulic driven piston air compressor. 14 foot body from here to the front. The workspace is extra. We have a 12,000 pound, 30 foot reach crane. The entire body is aluminum, except for the rear bumper, the deck inside, and the crank compartment. And you can see how they're separated. We have we have our, our big, very um, standout, standout-ish Wilton Vice. I bought this at a local hardware store. I was trying to find the biggest American-made vice I could, and this is what I found. They don't have any more. They don't have any more. So to operate the crane, we have a wireless remote. To activate the remote, you push any button. It comes on, tells you your load. It will tell me the weight in pounds. I believe you could probably change that how much is hanging from the crane. So to operate the outriggers, the crane, and the hydraulic compressor, which you can also do all of that from inside the cab, but turn a PTO on. If you wanted a compressor, you can turn a compressor on. Watch the PSI. there on the compressor. And let's do the outriggers.
four feet away from the crane, I can pick up 12,000 pounds. The further out you go, the less you can pick up. And right here, 30 feet away from the truck, I can pick up 2,500 pounds. And then obviously, the closer to the truck you get, the more you can pick up. And if you change the angle of the boom, it all factors. So inside the bed, the tools that I keep. There's our power source, Miller Big Blue 600 Air Pack 2019 model. We can air arc on 600 amps. We can turn the compressor on and have 60 CFM at 100 PSI of air. We have single phase 220 power. We have three phase 220 power, extra 220. We have four 110 standard outlets. <clears throat> we have a, a remote control. This is where we would hook in our line boring welder or other types of con uh, remote controls for the unit. It has digital display. You can go in there and check your uh, service intervals and all of that. It has all the different settings from running from a remote, running flux cord, no gas, dual shield with gas, stick, carbon gouging, TIG welding. You can set it all. And then this is how you would adjust your uh, temperature. It is diesel fuel only, and on a hard day's work, you could burn about 20 gallons of fuel in it. And the, the fuel tank is 25 gallons. Our welding cylinders that we carry in the very front is 100% argon. Mostly have that for either purging a tank to weld it or TIG welding. And then we have our oxygen and acetylene tanks for our torch. Then we have two 7525 bottles, which is the most common gas that I use for MIG welding, running dual shield or hardwire. 75% argon, 25% CO2. Shade is always a good thing to have, or in some cases it could be protection from the rain. We have a pipe liners cloud umbrella as well with a magnetic base so we could stick the magnetic base onto a piece of equipment and put the umbrella to it to get the shade where we need it. Ladders are obviously always a very um, important thing. I carry usually multiple random pieces of scrap metal because you just never know what you might run into. And an ice chest. So that's basically what I keep in the truck. Now up here, this is a, uh, a big unused area. And I have uh, lots of ideas for this area. I'm thinking a mini lathe, a water tank, and a pressure washer. Something to that effect. I'll do a video when I make that, when I make it my mind. All right, so what do I keep in my boxes? This is the, I guess you could say the hand tool box. It has all your basic hand tools in it. We have um, caps for like hydraulic lines and whatnot. Cat sells this, this uh, kit. When you ever take a line off, stick a cap in there, keeps all the dirt out. And we have O-rings. We have a scanner for our vehicles. And then I leave a little space here where I can throw parts up here. If I have customer parts, O-rings and whatever, I can throw them up here. So we have right here, standard open in wrenches, some ratchet wrenches, the metric on this side, missing a couple sets, haven't got them yet. This is a, uh, this is a pretty cool light. I'll post a picture of what it looks like at night and how, what it looks like set up. It's pretty cool. available my Amazon store so the top drawer is kind of 
a lot going on, but basically I keep zip ties, micrometers. Here's some uh, filming stuff. You have T-handle Allens, metric, standard, and Torx, razor blades. We have bigger Allens. We got inch and a quarter and 24 millimeter. These are all small Allens in here, extended Allens. Just, you never know what you're gonna need. And then magnets, all the magnets are up here. Magnets and mirrors are right here. We have screwdrivers, scraper. This gets used a lot for scraping off grease. All kinds of different picks, screwdrivers. These are hydraulic or like O-ring picks. There's no like real sharp edges. So if you're trying to save a seal, you could get in there and pry them out without cutting them. And then just your basic screwdrivers. Plier drawer. I like Nipix, obviously. Have all of your pliers that I I ever use. Some oil, big oil filter wrenches. I would say that these ones are probably one of my favorite Nipix pliers. They seem to get used the most. And I really like, I really do, I do really like these two. This thing will cut very nicely. It's kind of a miscellaneous electrical drawer, miscellaneous electrical stuff, soldering gun, electrical tape, equipment keys, testing wires. Another somewhat miscellaneous drawer. We have air hammer bits, oil wrenches, spanner wrenches, small impacts, seal installers, <clears throat> wrenches that wouldn't fit here, crescent wrenches. <laughs> Extensions and ratchets and um, adapters. Three quarter inch extensions, one inch extensions, quarter inch, half inch, three eighths. All kinds of different wobble sockets, whatever you think you would need in the field. Three quarter inch ratchet. Sockets, quarter to half inch drive. Everything you typically use. We have sockets up to uh, three, three inch, I believe in here. And we have some miscellaneous air fittings, some square drive stuff. And then we have some even bigger sockets up to, I believe those are four and an eighth on that big one. We have air tools, low guns, one inch gun, three quarter gun, air hammers, die grinders. And over here we have hydraulic caps. These work really good. You pull a line off, shove it in there. It's a fast, effective way to stop low pressure hydraulic fluid from coming out. GIC caps, flat face caps. And underneath that is pipe fitting caps. We have a snap-on power inverter, which like I stated before is controlled from inside the cab. I can turn it on and off. So it's not charging consistently and all the time. We have three Milwaukee charging stations set up here. Set the batteries on there and they charge while you're going down the road. Blue point jump box, you can do 12 or 24 volt. Seems to work pretty well. We got some soapy water for testing out leaks. Torch. We got some camera gear. This is all shoved full of rags, gloves, miscellaneous types of tape, caution tape. Um, duct tape, whatever types of tape you think you would need. We have DOT air fittings to, for changing airlines on trailers, trucks. Like this truck has a ton of airlines. If I ran something over and ripped off a bunch of lines, I should be able to fix it. 
I carry all kinds of DOT airline. Down in here, we have soldering kit, file kit, tire repair kit, hydraulic gauges. Here's a thermal gun. We have a ball joint press, which I use for lots of things, not just ball joints. Battery tester, load tester, laser temp gun, power probe. Um, we have brake line flaring tools, <clears throat> and we have a digital snap-on fuel gauge tester kit and compression ch checker. There's kind of a lot of random specialty tools that don't get used every single day. I'm going to get shoved in there. One thing I don't like is those will hit, but almost every single service body is like that. You have to close the handle every time, but then when you go to shut the door, it hits this one. Anyways, Milwaukee. Yes, I like Milwaukee. Got a fan, multiple uses, most likely gonna get used for venting out an area from dust and welding fumes funnel it was the best place for it we have m18 metal saw works really good cut through one inch plate like butter one inch milwaukee impact very strong Milwaukee bandsaw works really well. And we've got a wood skill saw, use it for wood and aluminum. Got a light. It also works really well. Had this one for a while. And then we have our mag drill as well. Okay. So this drawer. I call it my measuring and marking. So you got string for string lines, 100 foot tape measure. We have shims. This is for the shear head, tape measures, pins, soapstone. We have some inside, inside snap gauges for bores. Lots of marking marking type utensils in there. This is the hammer drawer. I'd say my two most used hammers are this one and this one. This is another kind of a miscellaneous drawer. This has all the, all your little kits, hose clamps, extra electrical stuff, you got more O-rings, three certs, fuses, all different types of fuses, got extra battery lug terminals, self-tappers, more O-rings, we've got some tire repair stuff here, miscellaneous wire, got some more electrical stuff so this a lot most of this drawer is all drill drill related so we have a bigger set it goes from 9 16 to 1 inch tipco industries i really like their uh, drill bits i've been trying them out lately and they're definitely better than all the other stuff i've used so we have hammer drills for use in rotary hammers for concrete. And then we got like reamers and specialty bits here. We have our slugger bits. 
mostly these that get used in like the mag drill. And then this is one of my favorite bolt extractor kits. You have left hand drill bits and multiple different type of extractors. You know, 40% of the time you'll, you'll get it out with the left hand bit. It'll, it'll naturally unscrew itself. Here we have basically just a bigger version of whoop. We have a bigger version of what was in there and get a little bit bigger on the sizes. These are also highly recommended. We have carbide tipped uh, annular cutters for the mag drill. These, I've drilled through AR400 with these, no problem. Stainless, no problem. They work really, really well and they're still sharp. And I do believe that these are on my Amazon store. More drill bits. Another Tifco Industries. Nice to have kind of all your sizes if you're trying to uh, tap something and you need a, a number drill bit. You got all your numbers on this side. You got all your standards over here. You got some metric stuff in there. Basically, these are just all duplicates. Um, this is just another 9 16 to 1 inch kit. We've got carbide burrs in here. We have carbide and regular countersinks, cleaning up holes, deburring edges. You never know what you're going to run into. But I run into a lot of hardened steel, so it's worth it to have carbide stuff. Long, long die grinder bits. We got taps and drills. Here's a carbide tipped um, drill I showed in one of my videos. The big tap was probably bought for one job. And then we have a, uh, there's this drill wax from Tifco Industries as well seems to help with the drill life. And then we have it's kind of a pile of random drill bits. Carbide um, countersinking bits. Obviously, Milwaukee batteries. <clears throat> Well, why is there yellow paint on those? So, if you're on a job site, Milwaukee, DeWalt, Nikita, they're all popular. Everybody has them, right? I have almost certainly lost tools on job sites because everybody had the same tool and there's no way to tell them apart. Nothing was marked. So I started marking my Milwaukee tools with cat yellow paint. They're marked on the batteries and they're marked <clears throat> on the on the tool itself inside like the battery port where it can't be easily scraped off or cleaned um as an example here at the shop there's three locations that we have milwaukee tools that are all the same both service trucks and in the ram or and in the shop so the yellow you just automatically know the yellow ones came out of the kenworth or the orange ones they came out of the ram Some Milwaukee tools, got a transfer pump. I've used this for water, oil, diesel, never gasoline, but I've used it for a lot of fluids. Multiple drills, <clears throat> the cordless drills like to overheat, so I like to have two or three of those. Probably one of the most used impacts, stubby three eighths, quarter inch bit driver, half inch impact, die grinders. You guys have seen me use these a lot. Or Milwaukee.
grinders, air blower, sawzall, more drill, cordless hammer drill, 90 degree drill, light. In this corner we have a a digital digital level. <clears throat> Most jobs don't need to be this precise, but if they do, we have a digital level. I actually have two two digital levels on the truck. 12 pound sledgehammer when things need to be persuaded. After this, it just gets liquid. Gets either the torch or the plasma after that. We have hoses for our Milwaukee pump, and then we have a set of heavy duty jumper cables shoved back in the corner. All right, in this department, we have two drill and tap sets. This one goes to a little bit bigger sizes, but I like to have two. Complete sets, just in case you break a tap, whatever, you never know. This has electrical fittings in it. And then behind that, we have our uh, crack and uh, our crack detection spray. Inside there, you spray that dye on there. Spray the dye on there and you can detect cracks in metal. Grease gun, spool gun. We got, you know, brake clean, grease, paint, WD-40, different types of chemicals and things that you use. And the little box above it, stuff that's most likely to spill. I have Loctite, anti-seize, silicone, and things of that nature. Top drawer, we have some big C-clamps. I do want to say that these, uh, Fireball tool clamps are pretty badass. They give you a short, short. I think the tube is bent. Hold on. set that up on any any tube or solid bar you have and make a clamp you could put two of these on there I mean you could really really make it how you want it I was most intrigued by these because if I needed to use this as a dog clamp I could put this on have this piece however long I want cut it weld it and use this to push down on metal and I don't have to cut one of my good clamps up. This drawer we have um, big metric wrenches in here, big standard wrenches, pipe wrenches, big crescent wrench. Digital half inch uh, torque wrench, 3H digital torque wrench. We got a punch set. Snap on punch set, it gets used quite a bit. Different types of pry bars, alignment tools, things of that nature. Brass punches. Underneath here, we have this is the stand for the light that I was talking about earlier that I'll show you. Got a couple blow guns and then here's the base to the stand for the light. I'll set it up later. This compartment, we have a bunch of uh, hose reels and cord reels. We got 110 coming straight off of the 600 air pack. Yeah. Torch hose reels, which is all plumbed up to there. This is our inert gas hose coming from our welding cylinders. This is air coming from the air pack. And those are positive and negative coming from the air pack. We have reflective triangles. And then to start and stop the air pack, we ran the switches out here so you don't have to climb 
Find the side. So you can turn it on, and you can turn the air compressor on. Right there. Everything from the welder power and air goes out of the welder, underneath the welder, into the bed. There's a compartment, there's a space underneath here, and it's ran back this way, and it runs into the reels, it runs into these plugs, and it runs into the reels. So we have our crank compartment here. I typically try to carry two welding helmets. I have smashed one accidentally left me in a tight spot before on a job. We have some um, respirators, different types of welding clothing. We have ratchet straps underneath here. Extra welding leads. I have 40 feet on the reels over there. If we need extra, we have extra. And then there is a half inch air hose reel in there. It comes out the back and that is connected to the hydraulic compressor for the truck. We have our inner pack hollow cylinder ram that, that is used for pressing and pulling bushings or whatever you may need it for. And wheel chocks, bottle jack, different spacers and things to use with uh, the hollow cylinder. All right, in this compartment, we have all of our, uh, some extra air hose lines, extension cords. We have ground cable for the Miller 220 AC-DC, extra 220 extension cords. Miller Arc Reach 12, mostly used for running dual shield. Typically don't run hard wire in it. Um, 15 foot. Bernard gun. <coughs> I really like this gun. You can swivel the head around. You typically, I'm running Lincoln 71A75 116th dual shield out of this. And then we have Multimatic 220 ACDC. So we can MIG, TIG, and stick off of this. All we need is just regular 220 power, single phase. Um, I feel like MIG welding with this is a little bit smoother versus running hard wire in the suitcase. That's, that's why I choose to use this when running hard wire. Main reason I have this particular machine in this truck is because it's capable of AC TIG welding. And you need AC TIG welding for welding aluminum. Plasma cutter, Hypertherm Power Max 105. It is a three phase only unit, and we have three phase ran up to that plug, and it's plugged in right there. <clears throat> um, it's technically facing that way. The leads come out through this oval shaped hole on that side and then they go up here or I could just pull the leads out and use them. The leads are always connected. Mm -hmm. They're 50 foot leads. You can, you can get longer leads. Never really needed longer than 50. Um, to adjust it, you gotta stick your hand in there and you can do it by feel or you can stick a mirror in there to see where you're at. It's usually typically always set on the same setting. So we've got our plasma up here and we have our nut and bolt assortments. Top one is miscellaneous and these, all the blue ones are metric. We got big, to small, I believe it's a six to 24 millimeter.
We've got some standard stuff. We have a wide range of bolts. I'm always needing some type of bolt, nut or washer. We have a very good selection now. This compartment, we have uh, miscellaneous safety gear up here from new respirators, knee pads. We have a, uh, a well, we have welding goggles, which I'm gonna have to use for a project coming up. <clears throat> so you basically this, these act just like a regular welding helmet. It could be in a very confined area. I've used them a couple times and they've definitely paid for themselves. We've got some rain gear, safety high vis vest, <clears throat> lockout tag out stuff. Basically, this is if you are working on a machine. If you're working on a machine, a piece of equipment, anything that can be powered on or started. A lot of places require a lockout tag out to where this would, the main battery kill switch, main power source would be locked out. There's only one key. You take the key, keep it with you. That way, if you're inside of a conveyor belt, inside of a machine, inside the engine bay of something, nobody can just jump in there, try to fire it up, take off, crush you, kill you. They'll see this and hopefully say, hey, I probably shouldn't try to start this. So that's the whole point of this. Eric rods, typically 5 16 is the most common size I use. Seems to work really well with 600, 500 and 600 amps. I like to keep <clears throat> I like to keep quite a few on hand because you never know. I do have some smaller 3 16 rods if I need to do a little precision precision gouging. Some stick rods, 7018, 6011, and we have some I believe this is nickel 55 for welding cast iron. Works good for cast iron. Pipe wrap. Never know when you need to mark out something that's round. So we have that. Earplugs. We got some miscellaneous um, helmet gear and all extra lenses for the welding helmets. I like to have all the same welding helmets so I can keep all the same lenses. It's a lot easier than dealing with five different lenses. Got tags, extra plugs for welders in case it breaks, trash bag, <clears throat> extra safety glasses, hard hat, extra fire extinguisher, <clears throat> torch, extra consumables for torch, extra um, ground clamps, stick stingers, extra regulator, Got some gloves, we have some cotton gloves. These are nice disposable gloves if you're working and it's cold or whatever and you don't care about destroying gloves. And we have, this is what I like to use with that full face mask. That keeps your neck from getting burned. <clears throat> Multiple welding blankets and we have uh, welding caps. This has been so far my favorite brand of welding cap that I've ever tried. <clears throat> and yes, I use Harbor Freight gloves because they last just as long or longer than the Miller gloves that are similar. And they are like one third the price. Rigging. Basically, all the chains in here are grade 100 that are rated for lifting and that everything in here is rated. It all has um, tags and it's all designed to be used for lifting, such as cat lifting hardware, 
you know, it has a tag on it. It tells you what it's rated at and everything. All the shackles, USA made, no China junk. I don't want anything hanging above me or near me that is being supported by that. All the straps, same thing, made in USA. Everything is rated so you know what you're doing. Um, we have chain, chain come alongs, snatch block. Here's our double chain. You've seen it, seen these in quite a few videos. We have two chains that come off of this and we could put both of these together to make a four, four leg chain sling. Um, mule tape. I guess you could say this part, this one's not rated, but it does say 2,500 pounds on it. This is good for random tying up hydraulic lines and things like that. This compartment, we have extra welding wire. We have dual shield up here. We have smaller spools of hardware. We have our air arc torch. We have extra um, lines for running inert gas off the welder if we need to run out further into the field. Fire blankets, fiberglass fire blankets. Don't uh, don't wrap yourself up in those. They get very itchy. Tarp. Never know when you need to tarp something up. This one's kind of uh, not really being used by much, but we got battery, battery lugs. Hypertherm consumables, extra bandsaw blades. <clears throat> Vice grips. Grinder guards, handles, grinder nuts and arbors. We've got some random tabs that could be used for tacking, lifting, whatever you want. Multiple types of concrete anchors. You never know when you might need to bolt a handrail down or, or something, you never know. So we have stainless wire for the TIG welder. In case, or we have stainless wire for the MIG welder just in case we need to weld some stainless. Consumables for the TIG. We have some purging stuff. Extra regulator, TIG torch, foot pedal, and those are tow hooks for the front of the Kenworth. <clears throat> we got some squares. Fireball square. I really like these. I've used them a lot. Adjustable magnets. You can make it square, set it at any angle you want, tighten it down. I do really like this square. It's got a nice big base when you're trying to set up, set something up. It'd be really handy. anti-splatter spray if you want to spray it on your uh, nozzle of your welder keep some of the dingleberries off or if you have a workpiece and you don't want any of the dingleberries to stick to it you could also spray it to the workpiece and then you just have to clean it off later they do make some that is a lot easier to clean this is not one of those extra liner for the for the mig gun in case it gets kinked or messed up in the field, you got one ready to go. All kinds of extra consumables for the plasma. Bernard consumables. Nozzles. It's kind of messy in there, but you got all kinds of extra stuff. If you're in the field, it's not worth it to pack up all your stuff and drive an hour or, or more. Go to the store just to buy something. Lifting tabs, tack it, tack it to a plate, lift it up into place. Wedges for wedging in, wedging metal together to make it uh, make things line up. If 
you have to lift something up, maybe you can wedge that in there, get clearance. Also, you could use it as a dog clamp. I don't know if I have a good example of that right here. More anti-splatter. This is probably the one that works the best, but the tip gets clogged up. So you only get about a quarter of the bottle and the tip gets clogged up and you can't clean it. Um, but this works the best that I've ever used. Bailing wire, tying up lines, hydraulic lines. Bailing wire is good. Several different types of MIG pliers, wire brushes, brass, stainless, regular steel. We got some more wire brushes over here. We got different types of sanding pads for cleaning out bores. Grinding wheels, sanding wheels, cubitrons, stone, stone wheels, all kinds of different, different wheels in here. Grinders, typically use five inch grinders. Every now and then we use the nine inch grinder. Keep some, uh, Couple squares underneath here. My biggest pry bar. About the only place it fits. Goes right there. And on this side, we have all of our TIG welding rod. Just kind of shoved in there. We got mild steel, stainless aluminum. It's all shoved in there. <laughs> all right, that's the truck tour. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.